Hi guys, this is Rashid and you're watching Step by Step Robotics. So today I would like to show you one of another method to control the robot without slam and odometry. So you might have seen my previous video that I use a line detection from OpenCV to detect a hallway light path and generate a middle path for the robot for the navigation. So in case of similar environment today, I'm going to use the high level PID to sense the distance besides of the robot and adjust the steering with the PID output. So if you're ready, let's get started. So let me remind you again what is our constraint for the environment. In case of the robot needs to navigate in such a narrow path, like a hallway or corridor-like, and some place where wheels odometry is hard to use, and we want the robot to use only a single lighter with low computational cost. So the idea of this robot is try to let it stay on the middle of the path as much as possible. If there is obstacle, then stop and turns around if it found a closed end way and try to change to the next row when it found an open end way. So this kind of navigation is good for the robot which already known start and stop position like navigation in the greenhouse and so on. In this time, the LiDAR is placed in front of the robot instead of robot axis. So we could get a scan point as shown like this. So I divided the laser scan into left zone as green and right zone as yellow. So from the ranges array, we can get the ranges of each zone as ranges L and ranges R. Then on these two arrays, we can find the minimum range and store it as range L min and range R min. After that, we can calculate a difference between these two minimum values. The diff will be fed to PID object to compute an output. Once we get an output, it will be used in a linear mapping function to map with steering min and max. So here we need to specify how much of min and max of steering it should be. And from my experiment, this value seems to be the good limit. Then finally, we just published the SBUS steering throttle to SBUS command topic. If you don't understand how SBUS command comes and where is it published to, I highly recommend to check on my video of JMO App Ross. So now I'm on my laptop and one of my terminal is logged into the JSON Nano of the bot and the YD LiDAR node and JMO App Ross node are running in the background now. And this is my code of the robot navigation. I'm using this simple PID model. You can install it by pip install simple iPhone PID. If we are scrolling down, these are the PID parameters we need to tune according to what we want. And we're going to use this PID object to calculate the output PID. So our set point of this PID is zero where the difference of both sides are zero. If we are going more down, this is where we pass the our feedback, which is variable diff. So the PID will start to compute. Then we're gonna map the PID output to the steering range as I explained before. And lastly, we publish the command to SBUS command topic down here. So I would like to start with the gain that I feel it works well. So KP is 15 and others are zero. So only P control. Now the code is running and it's waiting for me to change to auto mode. So you will see that min left is less than min right, which means the bot is close to the left side. So the steering value now is less than 1024, which is gonna make the bot turn to the right. So our PID is working correctly. And from the laser scan topic on Arvis here, it's quite clear that it's closer to the left side and try to eliminate the control error by shifting itself back to the middle of the path. Then I'm gonna run this RQT plot to see the steering value from PID control. So if it's at the middle of the hallway, steering should close to 1024, which means no steering. I will switch to auto mode and let's see how it moves. So 
So you will see the bot is trying to adjust itself back to middle path. And my desired response of this robot is to steer smoothly without jerky acceleration or kind of rapid change. So it will go slowly to the middle and this looks good enough for me without extra I and D gains. So once it reached the close end like this, it will turn around and come back. So I try put some disturbance on it to see how controller responds for a bigger error. This kind of scenario might happen if there is a rock or something stuck on the wheel. So you can see that this P control is good enough to bring the bot back to the middle. Now let's see that what would happen if we increase KP extremely high from 15 to 50. It looks like this higher gain is not that bad, but it's turned jerky time to time. You could see on the graph that it's oscillating a lot compared to last time. And because I set the steering range not that much, so the actual movement is not much oscillating like a graph. But in some application which requires smooth motion, this might not be acceptable. And as you can guess, the higher KP can make the reaction mass faster when there is some disturbance. Now let's see if KP gain is really low like 5. So the reaction is much slower and looks like it's leaning much on the left side and couldn't bring itself back to middle. So the steering adjustment is really less and at some point it might be too less to steer to where we want. Because most of the robot has a dead band where we adjust the steering but there is no movement according to our input. And as you can guess, the recovery time is much longer and it's not a good gain to use. So now I set the gain back to where I satisfy and I would like to show you how the robot works as a mission. So here I set up the environment like 3 rows. So once it reached the close end, it will turn around and come back. And once it found the open end, it will shift to the next row by using another PID control to check only one side. This is called uh, wall following mode. And once the robot found two sides wall, it will continue using distant difference navigation again.
And that is for today's videos. I hope you guys like it. So from my perspective, I feel like this method is much reliable and easier to tune rather than the OpenCV line detection. And even in a place like uh, highly non-uniform walls, for example, uh, like bushes and small trees are lining up beside of the robot. So there is no need to construct those as a lines because this method only cares about the closest distance from the robot. If you like this kind of video, please give me a like button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you soon.